Welcome to In the News for April the 21st, 2023. I am Brad Birdie from AppsInLaw.com. And this is Jeff Richardson from iPhone JD. Hey, Brett. Hello, Jeff. Good to talk with you again. We were off last week, but back as normal as we can possibly be. But uh, <laughs> we it seemed like we got to start off with a little bit of a scary story. I remember, I don't think it was two weeks ago, maybe three or four weeks ago, we talked about this interesting video that came from the uh, Wall Street Journal, right? One of our yeah, favorite February, videographers. Think, yeah, yeah fe February. So Joanna Stern... Uh, uh, had a video and a story about, uh, a, I, I kind of call it like a, like a scam. It was basically thieves coming into a bar, looking over your shoulder, getting your Apple phone, iPhone passcode. And as soon as right. they did that, they would take the physical phone and then they could immediately jump in and change like your iCloud password. And that was some very scary stuff. Uh, but she's back <laughs> with a follow-up story, uh, which I don't. I don't know if this is a little bit more scary. I think it is. But hey, it's really good. I mean, I'm like you said. I'm hearing a lot about these that people are seeing this story. It's like, hey, you know, is is Apple not secure anymore? Like, is my iPhone not secure? I, I'm not quite ready to go there. But as always, it's good to take a few precautions on this, right? It's almost the opposite of it, Brett. It's almost that it's too secure. I mean, that's the problem. Oh, good point. And, you know, okay. and it's not just okay. it's not just bars. I mean, it could be an airport. I mean, any public place. You know, true, the idea true. is that any place that you're in public and you type in your passcode, if somebody is watching or even recording so that they could later replay it and, you know, play it right. slower and see what you type, you know, then they have your passcode. And if they steal your iPhone, they can do all sorts of horrible things with it. Since yeah. she posted her story in February, many, many yeah. people wrote back and say, gosh, this happened to me too. And she named a number of cities that it's happened in i was you know delighted to see that new orleans where, where i live was one of those cities but anyway um <laughs> the problem is is that so once it happens to you when the bad guys take your phone put in your passcode and as you just said they could then change your apple id passcode and stuff like that mm -hmm. um the next thing you know they can set it up and there's a way that you can set up your iphone and i actually have mine set up this way now it's a new feature apple came out with last year that you can make it so that everything's completely locked down and secure such that even like a backup that apple has through you know iCloud backups and stuff, it's right. all completely locked down, and even Apple Encrypted. can't get to it. Yeah. So right. if some reason some hacker was able to get into Apple's website, or if you know some government you know forced Apple through a subpoena or whatever legal means to turn something over, Apple could honestly say we don't have the data. It's 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 completely encrypted, right. and right. we can't get into it. So it gives you incredible safety and security. But if a bad guy does it, then the good, the person whose phone it is, they can't get access. And so that's what happens here. People in these stories are going to Apple and say, Apple, someone stole my iPhone. I want to get my data back, but they've locked right, it up behind right. this secure thing. Can you right. just flip a switch and give me all my data back? And Apple's like, I'm sorry, you can't. Uh, and the Wall Street Journal article has people saying, look, here's my driver's license. I can right. prove that I really sample. am <laughs> the real Jeff Richardson. Right. And Apple's like, that's not the uh, issue. It's not that we don't yeah, right. trust you. We right. literally cannot access the data. So it's interesting because Apple is very concerned about privacy and security, but there's always that tension between privacy and security and convenience. Right. Um, right. And, you know, some people are saying, well, why doesn't Apple change the phone so that a passcode alone is not enough to change your Apple ID password? And they certainly could do that. They absolutely could. But the problem is the number of people that walk into an Apple store and say, right, I've forgotten right. my, I've, my Apple ID password. Uh -huh. Can you help me out? I mean, that happens right. so frequently yeah. that Apple decided to protect those people by saying, okay, as long as you know your passcode, you can then change your password. But that's the right. problem. Is that anybody with your passcode? So there's not really a good answer. I mean, if you're someone Rocks who's and hard your places. password, you're yeah. so Apple, happy Apple did it this way. If you're someone with a phone stolen, like the people in, in this week's Wall Street Journal article, you wish Apple didn't make it easy to help people out. So, right. you know, the all, all we can say to people is you got to be careful about your passcode. I mean, and I'm not I'm not saying it's easy. Yeah. We've all been there before. If you can use face ID or touch ID, great. But if you yeah. find that it's not working, you need to type in your code, you know, put your phone close to your chest, do something to, you know, watch out or wait until you're in a private area before you type your code in. It's, um, you know, you don't want to be alarmist because yeah. it's not like it's happening to everybody, but it's happening enough that it, it's a real it's a real thing that happens. You'll link to another story from Tidbits here, Adam Inks, who's been around for many, many, many years. Very well. Yeah, just, just a pause on that. I think yeah, they yeah. just announced that Tidbits has been around for 33 years Thir now. Whoa. That's incredible. My okay, goodness, well, a long time, but 
Bravo to Adam. Much respect. Absolutely. (laughs) Thank you, Adam. But that's exactly one of the things that he puts in this story, which is great, is pay attention to your iPhone's physical security in public. And we kind of take that for granted. Like, of course, well, you should. But, you know, I, I, I know I walk around you know, uh, downtown area or a park and people are just opening their phone, you know, to take a picture or stuff. You want to get access to it. I get that. But man, you, 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 like there's a lot of information. I remember in this this latest video from uh, Joanna Stern and and Nicole, I think also that that did it. Like the gentleman was just like, I I, I can't get access to my photos. Like I yeah, I, I, I can't I can't part, in, yeah. get access to all my information. And there is so much information now that we can carry around on these on these digital devices with us. And it's so true that you really just have to protect it. You know, I I I just remember I taught my uh, my daughter who got a, an ATM card, you know, from a from a bank account. Like when you go to an ATM, like you make sure that like I have my my hand covering up my card. As silly right. as that may sound, it's like you have to look around, make sure that there's nobody around that could possibly be over, you know, looking over your shoulder. You know, I know that sounds trivial, but in the same way, it's like we have to protect some of this information uh, that's that's on here. Now, uh, Jeff, real quick, before we move off of this, there was one thing in the video I know that Joanna was talking about. I remember setting up. Um, it's like a screen time passcode or password. Is that right? Or is that what it's called? Yeah. It used to be called um, uh, restrictions, like screen restrictions or something like that, yeah. right? Is it, And I don't know if that's the same thing. I think it kind of is so, to where you have to have like a separate <laughs> passcode, right. right? So that's another and, thing you got to remember. And the article that you're showing on the screen right now from Adam Inks to Tidbits, it actually mentions this as well. There is a way okay, that you can okay. set up an additional passcode for screen time. Now, yeah, screen time, okay. you know, the purpose right. of screen time is it's a way that you could limit how much do I use Facebook, how much do I use right. Twitter, you know, those sorts right. of things. But as a side effect of that, you can make it so that you can lock your screen time settings or maybe – if your phone is in the possession, if, if a phone's in the possession of like your child, you could lock right. your child's screen so settings and right. you could put a passcode on that to prevent them from changing it. A side uh, effect of that is the same passcode, which locks down your settings app right. also right. means that a bad guy couldn't get into the settings app and use your passcode to change right. your Apple ID. So right. you could say, hey, here's a simple solution. Everybody just use a separate screen time right. passcode. But then, right. then Brett, every yes. single solitary time you want to go to settings, you got to unlock the darn thing. And that's, exactly. I mean, I go to settings on my iPhone at least All the once time. a day. Yeah. So oh, I wouldn't want to be, so again, convenience versus security you know you exactly gotta, you that's gotta decide the tug of what's war. more important so that's ugh. the tug of war all the time I, I i remember here it is so it is in screen time now and it's called content and privacy restrictions mm-hmm. i remember jeff that I, I when i used to give you know uh, presentations around the country i would tell people this is early on right before we really had some of these issues we're talking about today but there was a way that it would change like location services like if you didn't want it you know, certain apps to track your location. Now today we've got a lot more options on that, but I would tell people toggle that on so that it wouldn't track your location if that was something you didn't want to do. Uh, and sure enough, I, I've turned a lot of those restrictions off, but the other thing was exactly what you were just referring to. To do that, you typically want to do a separate additional passcode. <laughs> so you've got your passcode for your phone and now you've got a separate passcode for screen restrictions. We actually use screen time for my son, <laughs> my okay. wife and I. So we lock him down to like certain t- hours of the day that he can get access to certain apps, right? Cause you got school and everything like that. But we use a separate passcode and I can never remember it. So I have to go and look <laughs> it up. We, we actually keep it in one password just for my wife yeah. and I. But the point that I'm saying that it's a separate passcode. So that doesn't solve the issue. I mean, it solves it in one way, but it co- goes back to the same issue you were just saying. If people can't remember one passcode, <laughs> on their phone how do we expect to remember two passcodes now even though it would fix the situation but i don't know if there's an easy answer just like you keep saying i i use that exact same phrase all the time jeff it's that tug of war between convenience and security you know it's we we talked about this i remember uh, a few weeks ago you could set up uh, a 26 alphanumeric password on your phone right instead of a four digit or six digit passcode that's extremely secure but it's not convenient, right? right? And I was like, it's like, what do you want? You're like, you got to pick one and you got to be comfortable uh, with that as well. Interesting stuff there. But thanks for linking to that story. And uh, we'll make sure that the video is linked as well so people can go and, uh, and look at that. 
Now, last week, I know we didn't have a podcast. We didn't record one, but there was another similar <laughs> security story that I found yeah. a, a little funny, but it's not funny in the sense that it is serious. But uh, I, I know we've talked about this before. This has come up before. I just like the, the phrase that they use called juice jacking. So when you're charging <laughs> your phone <laughs> in an airport or somewhere similar, you might want to just double check the 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 outlet that you're using or you know in some cases they don't even have like an, an electrical outlet it's just a usb port right that you can plug in your charging cord mm -hmm. well the fbi even says maybe you should just reconsider that real quick yeah the danger is that it's possible because of electronics that can be put into charging cords and charging ports char you know yes. thing that you put into a wall that right. if you connect it to your iphone it could try to basically hack your iPhone. Now, you because of the iPhone built-in security measures, you will, I, I, I wish I could say always, because I think it's always, right. but I'm right. not 100% sure on that. Let's just say at least most of the time, you should get a warning if it happens. And you've probably seen it yes. before. The warning yes. is something like, trust this device, question mark. Correct. The, exactly. Which is something you'll see if you plug yes. in your iPhone to a computer. So if you plug in your, in your iPhone to something that you think is just a power outlet, and it's saying, trust this device, you should be saying, no, I'm not trusting Correct. that power. I don't trust. So, you right. know, do not trust it. And if you say no, you can still charge your phone. You just won't have the, the thing is you want to prevent the, the data from going back and forth. Another th another warning sign you'll often see is this accessory is not supported, exactly. um, which yes. is frustrating if you have an accessory that you actually do want to use with your phone. But if it's something that you don't think is adding a feature to your phone, if you think you're just charging and it's telling you this accessory is not supported, you know, that right. should raise some red flags for you. Um, I, I believe that you'll get one of those warnings. But anyway, the FBI story was saying people that just, you know, click yes to those warnings or just go past them, Don't you know, then you, them, you're right, in a public right. area, whether it's a hotel right. or an airport or whatever. And if some hacker has set up a, a fake charging station, what is it? Jack, ju jack juicing, juice jacking, whatever you call it. Um, <laughs> that's, juice jacking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, then, you know, it could try to hack your phone and you wouldn't want that to happen. The, the safe solution. So what should you do? Um, the yes. safest solution is just plug into an outlet. If you see right. an actual Have outlet, like a regular, right. yeah, bring your own brick, bring your own cord, plug it in, and you're completely safe. But if you if that's not an option, I, I will also tell you it's a little bit safer if you're just plugging a, a cord that you trust into a USB port um, mm -hmm. because there's even it's as I understand it, the bad guys, the the number one way that they do this is actually by using a a, a, a USB cord that has electronic ports right. into it. So right. Right. If you see just a random USB cord out there, don't stick it into your device. It's pretty good, good advice for life. Don't be sticking that's stuff right. into places that don't belong if, if you, you don't see, know what you're sticking in there. And pretty much every you part of gum. your life, that's good advice. You know, if you see some gum on the street, don't pick it up unless you're elf, right? Exactly. And so that's the only. <laughs> so, um, but th but again, this is a story that, as you say, I had you know sometimes tech stories come out that like only you know nerds see, and then there's sometimes tech stories to come out that like your mom might ask you about or something like that. Right. It's like th right. this is definitely one that hit the mainstream stream a lot of people got the fbi's warning it was widely reported and so you know so when you're in that yeah. airport you gotta don't type in your passcode watch what you plug into there's a lot to worry about <laughs> in those public and areas. this came from specifically the the denver fbi office tweeted out this little warning like you know carry mm -hmm. your own charger usb cord i gotta be honest with you uh you know i usually carry we've talked many times about just having your own little battery charger right because i don't want to have to like i find a, a, a seat solution. or a chair yeah. that's like right next to those i mean i got obviously i know those batteries will run out at certain times but man just uh just bring your own and again it's similar to you know i think of this just quickly and we were just talking about ATMs. You know, I've seen stories where I think they call them skimmers, right? So the bad guys right. would put some kind of little electronics in the place where you would th where you would slide in your ATM card. And in a similar vein, I think, well, okay, you know, I've seen outlets that have both electrical outlets and USB outlets, and you could, you know, easily swap those out and you could put some kind of electronics in the back. Anyway, it just comes back around to the same thing. Don't just tap, you know, trust or yes on those messages that show up on your screen. And again, like you said, Jeff, you probably have seen this before. If you plugged in your iPhone into your computer or even sometimes into, you know, a, a car, um, or you know some somewhere else where you're charging it up and just hey, if that message comes up don't just tap it away <laughs> just take a moment to like you know think about it uh, uh so good good stuff okay that's i think that's all for our security segment for today <laughs> let's move on to apple card this is actually something that we've i know we have mentioned and brought up because apple it seems like apple's been talking about this for at least a year maybe a little bit more so the apple credit card 
is one thing and then there is apple cash or apple pay right so what i i'm probably not gonna do the best job of explaining this but if you spend money on your apple credit card and i do this a lot right. like at exxon or you go to certain um uh, I, I always buy all of my Apple purchases using my Apple credit card because it mm -hmm. gives me 3% cash back. Typically, mm -hmm. that goes into my wallet in what is what is just known as uh, Apple Cash, right? It's right. a little card. And that's great because I've been able to send money to my wife or my kids or somewhere like that. And it's just been sitting there. And I know you've got a story when you wrote this up today in a similar way. You could use that Apple Cash in different areas in different ways. But... Apple now allows you to actually put that Apple Cash into a savings account, which I just think is neat. It's almost like this is this is becoming the Apple Bank. <laughs> yeah, this no, now. it truly is. But it's good. I'm glad to see it. Yeah, I mean, think about everything that a bank traditionally offers. It's the ability for you to put money into it easily, which you can right. do. Take money right. out, which you can do. You know, have a credit card now, having a savings account. I mean, pretty much everything that you think of for bank functions, Apple is. People don't think of Apple as a bank. It's getting but, there. And again, technically, there. Apple is working with Goldman Sachs, so Goldman Sachs is technically the bank. Correct. But as right, far right, as you're right. concerned, you know, your iPhone is. Store, if you're storing up money that you get in Apple Cash, which I think is a, a way that a lot of people do it. You know, let that. Apple actually accumulate over time. And then, you know, next thing you know, you got $100, $500, who knows how much, right. and you can put it towards something special, but wouldn't yeah. it be nicer to get some interest? And the thing is the savings account interest that they're offering, I think it's 4.15% interest. That's yeah. actually pretty good That's interest. I mean, That's I would have bad. thought that Apple would offer like 2% interest, but right. you know, right. 4.1, I mean, there are some people that put money in the stock market and don't necessarily make 4.15% <laughs> if your investments aren't great. So, you know, 4.1% is a pretty good, you know, investment return. So, it's pretty nice yeah. that you can actually get yeah. that. Um, and again, it's it's just a little bit something to add up. And it's, it's so I mean, once once you set it up, the Macworld article that you're showing does a good job of showing you step by step, yeah. do this right. and then right. this and then this. Right. And then next thing you know, every time you spend money on something, and as you say, at some places like an Exxon or a Walgreens or an Apple right. store, Walgreens, you actually right. get three percent right. instead of one percent. Right. When you get that cash back, instead of going into your Apple Cash, it just automatically goes into the Apple savings account. And at the end of the month, you get some interest. So uh, if if you have an Apple card, I see zero. I mean, absolutely turn oh, yeah. this feature on. Why not get a little interest? I've been a big fan of the Apple credit card for a while. I'm not the biggest fan of credit cards in general, but I just, I love the transparency that I get with the Apple credit mm -hmm. card. All the information is right there. And this daily cash has just been sort of like, the frosting on top. In fact, my wife and I, this is like our our, our little, you know, coffee money. In other words, mm -hmm. it just kind of keeps adding up. And I I don't know, I'll have 30 or $40 in it every once in a while. But, you know, it's neat that I just go to the coffee shop and I can just use my Apple cash card, not the credit card, the cash card as a way to pay for the coffee. And it's just nice. But, uh, you know, some people kind of uh, rack it up quite a bit, like my friend Jeff here. Yeah, no, I alluded to that in my article. I mean, when I went, <laughs> I, I forget how long I've had the Apple card, but I guess I really hadn't used that Apple cash. And so right. I went and looked and I had like $700 in there. I'm like, that's real money. So I bought, you don't have to use it towards an Apple product. But when right. I bought a new Mac mini for my house and I yeah. got, it, you know, I've, I talked about this a few episodes ago, I got a souped up version. So it was thousands of dollars that I spent, but at least I could defray 700 bucks by sure. taking my, my Apple cash. You know, that, that helps the purchase for sure. I, and you know, just one last thing quickly, I would say I used to use my Apple cash as a way you can apply that as a payment to your Apple credit card payment, right, if that makes right. sense. So in, in fact, when it comes up, when you're ready to pay your Apple credit card bill, it comes up and says, hey, do you want to use, you know, your bank account or do you want, you've got $30 sitting in your Apple cash, yeah. you want to apply that. So it's just really neat the, how, how easy it is. And I'm just glad to see Apple's talked about this and I'm glad to see that it came to fruition here. Here is the, I didn't know that segment of our show, Jeff. <laughs> I liked how you wrote this up today. I I also knew you could change the text size on your iPhone, but you mentioned you didn't know you could change the text size in individual apps. I didn't right. know that. Yeah, I didn't know that because sometimes you make the text bigger and it's like, this is too big for most of my stuff. I really just want it bigger in my mail app or I really just want it bigger in my messages app. And right. um, so this post um, by Shelly Brisbane explains how you can do it using the accessibility settings on the phone. Again, I mean, we talk about this yeah, all the time. Host. Features that yeah. are technically probably intended for people with a special accessibility needs, but anybody right. could use them. Of course. And so uh, Jason Snell had mentioned that there's a new, uh, there's yeah, a, 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 a website called The Athletic, which is a really yes. good website that's now owned by the New York Times. In fact, 
because I have a New York Times subscription, I think I now have free access to The Athletic. And they've got really mm-hmm. good sports writers there. But um, they have a new iOS app, which is nice. You know, you could use a website, but sometimes it's nice to use an app. But right. he, he just found the text size too small in the app. So he was able to use the setting to go and just say, oh, we're not opening nice. up this app. Make okay. this text bigger, but keep the other text. So it's just one of these good features that if you didn't know you could do it, you know, now you know. And it's very useful. This is a great post, by the way, by Shelly. We'll link to it in the show notes here because obviously she talks about this uh, text sizing on the apps. But there's a few other things in here that's like, oh, I mean, I think I knew some of these things, but it's just great that, uh, you know, it's always good for the reminder, uh, which, yeah, is, yeah. which is good. And another reminder you posted, too, this is another uh, uh story from gadget hacks which i gotta tell you i i've started visiting quite often now because you keep linking to such good articles from here seven hidden iphone apps you didn't know existed a couple of these i did know about but it's again always good to get reminded about them yeah i like the idea that you can use control center as a tv remote for your apple tv so if you can't find your remote you can use your iphone to control the tv that's you know a nice one to know about and uh some of the little things like the code scanner you can tap one button and love that it'll it'll, you know bring up the the camera but get ready to scan a a qr code or something like that now some of them are linked in here a little silly they're really just things that are like you know testing right. it's fun to know that you could do it it's but unless fun, you right? are a diagnosed <laughs> diagnostic person doing a test on your iphone right. or a the fact test, that you can right. the fact that you can bring up that screen <laughs> using some hidden commands but you know not nice to know that you could do it so um. it's good you know i do like that he mentioned the print center this is something i don't see a lot of people talking about but when you print from your iphone um so i have an air air print compatible printer here in the house and so when anybody you know i just bring something up an email or a document on my iphone and i can print there well in the windows computer or a mac computer you usually have like a print center or a print app you know that shows like Mm -hmm. how 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 long it's taking for the print job to happen that kind of a thing well we don't really have a specific app on the ipad or the iphone to do that but if you do hit print and you send something to a printer from your iPhone, if you swipe up and go into your app switcher, you will see a print center, a print summary. And I do this a lot because it tells me like, you know, how many pages is printing? Did you know, is it black and white versus color, that kind of a thing. But that that print center only appears <laughs> when you've got a print job going. Anyway, I don't see that a whole lot. So I'm glad that he mentioned there too. That's that's some that's some good stuff. Let's go from the iPhone to the iPad and specifically, how about keyboards for the iPad? Thanks for linking to this today. Uh, I, I think I, I knew most of these keyboards that he mentioned on Macworld. This is Cliff Joseph, but it's always good to see, like, is there anything new? Is there something else that I should be uh, aware of? And he did a good job of not only mentioning keyboards that were like covers for the iPad as well, Jeff, but a few keyboards he threw in here that were like completely separate Bluetooth keyboards. I know you and I have talked about this quite a bit too. Yeah, that's why I thought this was a good article. Anyone out there, if you're in the market for an iPad keyboard, and you know, many people are, this it's just nice to see one central place. So it's both the built-in, you know, the options that are built into a cover, like of course Apple's Magic right. Keyboard, which yeah, is super like nice. That. Um, right. but then other keyboards from Logitech that uh, do something similar but aren't quite as heavy. Um, although the keyboards aren't quite as nice as Apple's Magic Keyboard, they don't have the fancy uh, you know, touchpad and stuff. And then the other completely different options. You and I have talked before that I use. In fact, it's in front of me right now, my MX Keys keyboard, which I like because I can tap yes. a button and it works right. with my computer and tap another button and it works with my iPad and tap another button and works with my phone. Um, and some portable keyboards that he describes because sometimes you just want something small to stick in your bag, which right, I use right. sometimes too. So um, so yeah, he, it's a good list of options. It's always good. I mean, it, it's funny because he mentioned the fact at the very top here, and I used to say this, you know, when the iPad was introduced in 2010, I remember specifically Steve Jobs on the stage saying, you don't need a mouse you don't need a stylus you don't need a keyboard like it's mm-hmm. not supposed to be a laptop but it's just like tim cook said in that gq article <laughs> a couple of weeks ago we talked about sometimes it's okay to change your mind yeah. <laughs> and it just seems like apple has really come full circle from this on the ipad it's like it really can be a complete laptop replacement if that's what you want and now apple sells keyboards apple sells the apple pencil apple completely supports the a, a bluetooth mouse uh, capability which is um which is quite fine. Yeah, this is the Let's one that I about, use. I mean, oh, I've mentioned good, it before. Yeah. I mean, just my little, it's just an Apple Magic Keyboard. It's just a small, portable one. Sure. And I, I fold it up in this little case here. For me, I don't, I, when I travel, I find that I don't want a keyboard all the time. So I don't want to have right. one that's always attached. But exactly. I can stick this in my briefcase and I'm good to go. 
And is that does that fold into like a stand for your iPad as well, it does. Jeff? Yeah, okay, it's, yeah. It's, it's see that? These cases I've seen some of that. So yeah. it makes it nice. I, really I, I, nice. I, use it, I use it frequently, but not all the time. I made the investment in this is the magic keyboard, right? So like the iPad is floating here, but mm -hmm, which is I a get beautiful it, keyboard. I, it is. And I thought that it would be a little too bulky for me when I first mm -hmm. got it, but now I can't. I can't stand not having it. That's and awesome. It, Great. You know, if I have to separate it, to, to your point, I do have to open up the keyboard, you know, all the way, and then I have to, like, separate the iPad from the back here. But, you know, it's just one of those things that I've worked around because I'm like you. Sometimes I don't want to have a keyboard. Sometimes I do just want to use the iPad as if it were, like, a yellow legal pad or something on there. But, anyway, good options there. We'll make sure that we link to that. Something I want to hear more about what you mentioned this morning in your post, Jeff, is <laughs> a smart smoke detector <laughs> yeah i i guess it, i didn't know such a thing existed but it doesn't surprise me that such a thing existed it sounds like you use the google nest protect and a story that you linked to today is how the home pod now can notify you if your smoke detector alarm goes off interesting yeah the nest smoke detector was one of the first you know sort of big popular smart home appliances that came out years and years and years ago google bought them a few years ago so now it's called the google nest um I'm okay looking up at one of my kitchen right now um and uh it's nice because it's what i like about the nest oh, yeah. is it's a smoke detector but it's super easy to use so it'll talk to you it helps, makes it very easy to set up and if you put multiple ones throughout your house oh. um it will tell you for example if smoke is detected upstairs in your daughter's bedroom okay. you know even the one down the kitchen will say you know, speak out loud, smoke is detected in, you know, so-and-so's bedroom. And so you know exactly the source of the smoke detection and stuff. And it talks to you and tells you when it's time. It's, it's just a very nice smoke detector, but it also sends notifications to the Nest app on my phone. So even if I'm away from home, if smoke uh, is detected, okay. you know, I could be across the country and I'll get an alert. Now, if you're across the country, there's limited things you can do perhaps, but maybe you could call a neighbor or something like that. So, you know, but of course, many people don't have a smart smoke detector they just have the basic one that was installed in their house and so right. now apple Guilty. has put an update to the home pods and um in fact i noticed it the other day because i just opened up the home app and there was a little alert a banner at the top saying hey there, there's this new feature do you want to turn it on and oh, when you turn yes, it on please. if your home pod which is always listening because it's always listening to see if you say the magic words hey dot 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 right. dot dot Siri, um, it's always listening. If it happens exactly. to hear something that sounds like a smoke alarm, because you know they pretty much all sound the same, it right. will say, "Hey, there's a smoke alarm playing," and it will send you a notification, which you know, which is great. I mean, maybe you don't hear it for some reason. Maybe you've got headphones on in your house and you're not listening, but then you right, suddenly right. get a notification that, "Hey, there's a could be a fire downstairs." So good, it's uh, good to get those notifications. I, I think this is a great feature for Apple, and it's built on something that Apple had recently put in some accessibility features. Again, it goes back to things that are built for one purpose, but could be used by the masses. There's ways that you can have your iPhone and other devices. If it hears something like a baby crying or right. a smoke detector, if you are hard of hearing, you can make uh -huh. it that certain things that it senses, it will give you an alert. So this is just taking a feature that originally was um, created for an accessibility need, oh, people yeah. that are hard of hearing. And it said, hey, we can actually make something very similar, more widely available for people that they could use it for another purpose. So, okay. you know, I, I see no reason not to turn on. So for me now, if I was going to have a smoke detector go off in the future, I guess I'll be getting two alerts, my Nest one <laughs> and my home kit. And, Just in but, case. But why not? I mean, for some reason, one doesn't work. Maybe I'll get the other one. They're calling this HomePod sound recognition. And actually, when you were just talking about that, I remember there was a video not too long ago from Apple. I can't remember exactly what the video was about, but there was one scene where the, there was a mother and a baby and the mother was obviously... Um, had some disability with with hearing and the baby was crying, but she couldn't hear it. But her Apple Watch gave her a notification. I remember exactly. specifically. And I know that that, you know, that's not the exact same thing we're talking about here, but I think it's similar. It's in the similar. Sense. Now yeah, this yeah. makes sense. This makes sense now hearing you talk about this. <laughs> My first thought was, OK, the HomePod is just listening for a smoke detector alarm but you know what if somebody just is like whistling for the dog or something like that like <laughs> does it recognize that like hopefully how is that so. going to work but hopefully yeah. it, it's been trained plenty on uh exactly what a smoke detector alarm sounds like <laughs> and we won't have that issue here's the nostalgia portion of our segment today jeff i saw harry mccracken um who has been around and beloved for oh, so many years time. in the technology industry. I saw that he posted something on Twitter about this, but I hadn't had a chance to read through this. It is the end of a 
printed error era yeah. <laughs> computer you know magazines are incredible no more now. it's you know when i remember in the 1980s when i was a teenager yeah. and just starting to get interested you know magazines like byte magazine and creative yeah. computing and even popular I remember uh, popular Finally. electronics i used to really yeah. i used to actually subscribe to popular electronics because when computers were really new it was one of the magazines that would talk about them and um and then when my my first computer was a was a sinclair computer and there was a magazine yeah. called sync s y n c but like computer magazines that's how you got the information that's how you learned about software about yeah. hardware accessories yes. about programs yes. and so when you were you know in the 80s and the 90s that was how you got your information and then and and you know of course i used to subscribe to other magazines too like newsweek and you know news magazines but then as the internet has come along the need for paper magazines has decreased and especially for computer magazines the need has has gone away so harry mccracken who way back when was the editor of pc world which absolutely the biggest biggest magazines right. in the world right um, you know, he's sort of, there's a picture of PC World right there. He's sort of, Incredible. you know, lamenting that there were two of them left. There was only two left. There was one called, it was it Maximum PC. Yeah, here it is. Maximum called, PC and Mac Life was the other And Mac one. Life. Yeah. yeah. And Mac Life was, uh, the Mac Life was the the second iteration of a magazine that I used to subscribe to called Mac Addict when it came out. Oh, and Mac yeah. Addict was fun wow. because Mac okay, World okay. and Mac User would be more of a little bit more serious. Mac User a little bit so than Mac World, but Mac Addict was the magazine for pure enthusiasts, and they did crazy things yeah. and they put yeah. crazy wallpapers yeah. in their Mac. You know, it was the fun one. And um, so anyway, it's the end of an era. Those two have now stopped oh, printing, and so if you want to get a computer magazine. Go look on the internet because you're not so, going to be getting printed copies of them every month anymore. First of all, he talks about how he, when he was a junior high student, Harry McCracken, he had the Radio Shack TRS-80, uh -huh. which I just, I love that. That was my first computer, I remember. But exactly <laughs> what you're talking about, I can't even remember the name of the magazine, but I had several editions of this very old magazine that just had some basic programming in the back pages sure. and i would just sit there and copy type it, it you know, why <laughs> exactly <laughs> jeff and it's funny on this bite magazine this is issue number one from september 1975 and it talks about a cassette interface your key to inexpensive <laughs> bulk memory and you know how i stored my programs on that trs-80 Mm -hmm. I had an audio cassette, one of those little ones, right, where the, the, the door flips up and open and you got the little buttons there. That's how I recorded my programs, Jeff. Mm -hmm. I just I thought that was great. And then last thing quickly, it just made me think of this picture of the Computer Shopper magazine. Do you remember those were like really thick and heavy? They were Jeff? huge because they had so many ads in them. Absolutely. But, but I enjoyed the ads because that's how you would learn about things. Is by Absolutely. Ads. Yeah. I remember fondly uh, in the it, this was 91 92 I was working at a Borders Books and Music if you can remember those they are no more but I remember I was working in the music department but I would hang out around the book section and spe specifically the magazine section because when they had new magazines like the next month come in to get rid of the old ones they would simply rip off the cover of so those old magazines yeah. so they couldn't sell it anymore well guess what they didn't want the paper anymore so yeah. i remember i would just i would take as many as i could <laughs> because they didn't <laughs> want them anymore they, they just need, want to get rid of them you know they're yeah. like well yeah if you want them we're just going to go throw them in the trash mm -hmm. and i would just have so many computer magazines without any covers on them <laughs> That's in my, That's in my apartment because i just love looking through it but the computer shoppers were always you know the the biggest bang for the buck because it was just so thick and everything but thanks for linking to this that was um that was a fun walk down memory lane and today by the way i do remember sometimes i'll take the kids to barnes and noble and they still have magazine racks and i remember the last time that we went a few months ago i went to like the technology section and it was just so hard to find anything on the computer side. I don't know. It just it pains me a little bit. I mean, I you know nobody likes to change all the time, but it is the way it goes. Yeah. And thank you. But Harry, the reality for, is, uh, I'm not reading this. them anymore anyway. So what can I say? Right. It's, it's like say you know I'm not I'm not using cassette <laughs> tapes anymore. So why should I be you know remorseful that they don't have cassette tapes anymore? But you know, <laughs> I read iPhone JD. That's where I go for my there news you go. every day. That's where you should go. <laughs> okay, one more nostalgia uh, portion before we get to our in the know. I'm so glad that you linked to this story from Marquez Brownlee. He is a uh, officially known as MKBHD, right? Marquez Brownlee Correct. HD. This is somebody that's been around for many years now, one of the most uh, well-trusted technology reviewers. Oh, he's a fantastic know him already. YouTube person, absolutely, yeah. Well, he, he took a hit for the team this past week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, specifically, a $40,000 hit for the team. 
I thought this was just brilliant the way he set this up. I'll let you take over there on this on the story now. Yeah, I mean, people have been selling at auctions these original iPhones, the one that came out in 2007, that are right. still shrink wrapped, that have never been opened. And so he went and Sotheby's, which is a very respected auction house, had one of these that they had taken a X ray to actually confirm that there was still an iPhone inside of the box right. and stuff like that. Right. It had never right. been opened. And so he bought it for, for he said <laughs> that he put in the, the minimum bid was $32,000, and that's what he bid. And he won. I guess, I guess nobody else bid, or, or maybe he only had to go up once or something like that but when you added on the fees and stuff like that for the auction it was a forty thousand dollar purchase so he spent forty thousand dollars to get a first generation iphone only to open it up yeah and there's a funny point in the video where he breaks open the cellophane and he says okay well this has now gone from a forty thousand dollar thing right 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 something substantially less dollars yeah exactly (laughs) but um it was fun seeing him open up the original iphone box i never had this the only iphone that i never had was the first generation. The first, I bought the, the 3G, second yeah, generation, yeah, which was the iPhone yeah. 3G. But the first yeah. generation iPhone, it included, you know, of course, the old 30 pin connector back when they used to use that. Yeah. And it even came with a charging dock, which I completely forgot about. Yeah, um, I remember just, that. I've seen so many original iPhones that are sort of beat up and stuff that it's been, I mean, forever since I've seen one that looked brand new, like this one out of the box. So it was fun just to see how it looked. Um, I thought it was funny that, of course, it was completely dead because it's been what, you know, how many years? Uh, right. 15, 16. How many year, 16, 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. So of course, the internal battery was dead. And even when he tried to charge it with the cord and the charging right. brick that came with right. it, that didn't work either because the charging brick itself had died after 16 years, which makes sense. <laughs> but he was able to use the they swap cord that with, out. Right. with another charger and get it charged up and he got it turned on. In fact, the end of the video, I mean, this is just the unboxing. It ends up with him getting to the initial uh, uh, setting screen. Screen. I had sort of wished that he would continue. Like I want to see <laughs> Me him. Me too. Up. I want to see him use Wait, it. And I want version two. Yeah, painfully slow, and of course the um, the cell wouldn't work because the original iPhone would have only used a uh, an edge connection, which right. networks don't even support anymore. So right. it, you right. wouldn't even be able to use it. On you'd have to use it with Wi-Fi. But um, anyway, it was uh, it was fun that he, like you said, took a hit for the team to show yeah. us all what it looks like this many years later to open up. An even at the iPhone. end there, like that that screen you're talking about, it was the next step is that you had to connect it to a computer. With, with an iTunes. I, that, that has iTunes software, <laughs> which doesn't and he's exist like, anymore. <laughs> we don't, we don't have that anymore. I, I, knowing Marquez and just you know following him for as long as as we we have, I, I'm sure there's going to be a follow up video, you know, as he goes into this because he actually so. had several other. He had three other original iPhones that he had just acquired mm-hmm. over the years for a few other videos that he had done, but none of them were brand new. But by, by the way, I, the other funny thing is, we'll link to the video. Obviously, you can watch it. I love how it came to him. It was in this humongous wooden crate that they sent it to him and then it was wrapped in like cellophane and then it was in a plastic box and then there was like shredded paper inside that (laughs) like like they took every single precaution to make sure that this phone got to him you know without a scratch or a dent i just thought brett are you telling me that you're not used to getting these crates whenever you buy things at auctions through south of these expensive things this this is not how you normally get your auction uh deliveries I can't remember the last time I had to open up a technology product with a drill <laughs> and screw. It's like he, he has a hand drill, a battery drill, and he's like having to unscrew the crate <laughs> to get it open in there. Uh, just, just great stuff. Thank you, Marquez, for uh, taking the hit for the team. I love it. In the know. In the know. I'm going to talk about Apple Watch because this is something that has been around for a long time. It's just one of those things like I I did know. I can't say that I didn't know about it, but it's like, wow, I'm really glad that I remember that. <laughs> uh, the, the, earlier this week, I, I, I drove home from uh, a, a project that I was working on, and I got home about 1130 at night. The kids and, and the wife were already in bed, but I needed to unpack a few things before I went into bed. Well, I didn't want to turn on a light, obviously, in my bedroom with my wife asleep. And I didn't want to like carry, you know, most time people would just say, well, hey, you got a flashlight on your phone. Just turn it, turn it on. But I needed both hands. Mm-hmm. But the other thing I had on was my Apple Watch. And if you didn't know, hopefully you do, on your Apple Watch, if you are on your face, you can swipe up from the bottom and that gets you into the control center on your right. Apple Watch. This is the area that you can go into Do Not Disturb. You can check your uh, battery life on here. You can do a few other things like go into airplane mode, but there is also a little icon in there that looks like a flashlight. 
I knew this was on. I had used this in the past, but this was an absolute lifesaver. I just flicked on that flashlight on my Apple Watch, and it was just enough light <laughs> to let me make sure I didn't trip into the into the closet. Didn't you know blind anybody else? It did blind me a couple of times. Now, one of the <laughs> things that was in interesting when you turn this on, there are three modes. You can go into just a white light, so the entire face of the Apple Watch just goes white, and it's basically mm -hmm. a flashlight. If you swipe to the left, it goes into a blinking white screen, which is I didn't even think about this. If you're out jogging late at night or on a bike or something like that, it's an excellent you know tool to <laughs> make sure that everybody knows that you're there on the road. And mm -hmm. then if you swipe to the left one more time, it goes into red mode. It's a red light, which is really helpful if you're out camping somewhere. I remember I used that actually when I was out camping, when I was uh, hiking the, the Guadalupe uh, Mountains, because I didn't want the bright light, right? It was way too bright, mm -hmm. right? There was no lights around. I wasn't in a house or anywhere. So that red light was perfect for being able just to, you know, just see in my general area there. The, the, the only thing was when you go to that first mode and you're on the white light, if you turn your wrist so that the face, the watch face is facing you, it usually goes dim. Like it goes almost to like half brightness. And then if you flick your wrist away back to the other side, it'll go to bright, the brightest mode. Um, I couldn't figure out how to be consistent on that. And so in some cases I would flip my hand to, you know, to face me and then it would blind me a little bit. Um, I wish that what I was trying to do was I was turning the digital crown <laughs> and I was like, okay, surely Apple put this in. Like maybe I could just set the brightness on this. Well, it didn't work. <laughs> there was no option there. And I'm like, come on, that can't be that difficult. Like I would love the only thing I would say is this is, was a lifesaver for me using the flashlight on the Apple watch, very easy to access, but I just wish Apple, you would just let me, let me use the digital crown or like, you know, tap it a couple of times so that I could say only want like half dim, right? Like I don't want full brightness. <laughs> only want half brightness or something along those lines. It seems like that would be an easy thing, but you know, I, I, Apple doesn't pay me to do, to be an engineer or anything. Anyway, that's the only thing. Remember, you've got a little bit of flashlight on your Apple watch and it really can be helpful. I'll say one thing about your tip before I go into mine. You yes. mentioned scrolling from the bottom of the screen to get to the control center. Yes. Um, if you if you scroll using, you can either with your finger or using the digital crown. If you go all the way to the bottom of the control center, you'll see yes. a button that says something like edit. And that's yeah, useful right, because what you right. can then do is you can rearrange the icons so yeah. that the ones that you use the most often are at the top. So for me, I put, because the flashlight is so useful, I have it at the top and on the right. And then at the I'm top left, that. I have yeah. the one that's the turn the sounds on and off because I usually right. have my Apple watch completely silent, but sometimes I like to turn the sounds on. So those are the two ones that I use the most, but that oh, way beautiful. you can just, the things that you use most often, put them closer to the top. So, so they're, they're easier more to get to. Yeah, and then yeah, the ones yeah. that you use less often, you can put to the bottom. That's my Ooh, little, uh, Thank you. I hadn't thought about that. So, I just did that. I love it. Thank you, sir. Speaking of the Apple Watch, that's my tip today too, because oh, good. Part, we did not have a show last week. And part of the reason for that is that I had just had an orthopedic surgery. I tore my Achilles tendon. And yes. so I it was I had to go through a surgery and my, my entire Yuck. left leg is in a huge cast right now, which I've never had a cast on my leg before. So this is the first time that I've had to deal with crutches. I've got a knee cart right here next to me. Um, It's a just total, I mean, Fun. number one, recovering from surgery is its own thing. I'm on pain medications sure. and stuff like sure. that. But aside from that just the limitation of mobility and it's just so difficult to get around but when you are if, if you are on the mend for any reason i don't care if you're stuck <laughs> in bed with a cold or you're right. quarantined downstairs away from your family because of covid or whatever it is the apple watch is just so incredibly useful i i have used my apple watch a hundred times more over the last oh, week that I've been okay. in this situation. Um, and uh, so, I mean, the thing I like about it is your Apple watch, because it's attached to your wrist, it is literally always there with you. Always I there. like to say that my iPhone is always there with me and it's always pretty close, but sometimes I move from one room to the other and right. then my iPhone's in the other room and I'm on a knee card. It's going to take me 10 minutes to get back to but you know it's like you don't have easy access to right, it but my right. but my watch is always here and that's what's great about it and there's so much you can do you can well, like from your watch you can text people just go to the messages app or you can yeah. even call people you can you know speak just to your phone like it's dick tracy or something and so if i'm downstairs and i'm having an issue and i, I need help even if it's just calling my son upstairs to say can you come right. down and help me with something right. Right. That's incredibly useful. It's sort of like the digital version of the old, you're stuck in bed. And so you have a bell next to your bed, bell, that right. you ring the bell. Um, <laughs> if you have a smart home, 
um, like I do, you can control lights, which is useful because I, I can't get up and down the stairs. And so I've had to right. sleep downstairs in our, in our, in our, the place where we have our TV and we have a couch there. So like right. I'm in bed at night, uh, in bed, I'm on a couch at night. And then I want to turn off the lights in that room. I could just <laughs> pick up my watch and say, turn off the lights okay. or, or maybe dim That's them cool. or something because yeah, yeah, me, yeah. getting up from the couch to go six feet to the, I right. can't do that because of the cast. So that's been useful. Um, here's another really useful one is medications. I don't really take a lot of medications normally, but right now, Brett, I mean, I, I'm like sure, a pharmacist. I mean, I'm taking so many different things. Um, in fact, I'm, when I first started out, I was taking the serious <laughs> stuff too, like the oxy and stuff. I'm off that. Right, now. right, right. But, you know, there's so many different meds to take at different times in the day. You, you lose track of what you're doing, but the iPhone, and we, we've made this a tip of the week in the past, but you can go in and you can put each of your medications and yeah. what time of day yeah. you should take it. And then my right. Apple watch just tells me, okay, now it's time to take two Tylenol and it's time to take one of this pill and it's time to take one of this okay. pill. And I don't okay. have to think about it. It yeah. just tells me to do it. I can mark that I did it. It takes a log of what time I did it. So I can, if I need to go back and say, did I take that the right time? It handles all that for me. It's fantastic. Alarms, of course, if I want, you can set yeah, alarms on your watch, right, which is useful. Right, um, love it. Okay, here's one that I, I am not a big person to use the mindfulness app on the Apple Watch, which has okay. a function in it that used to be a standalone app. And now it's called a, called a part of mindfulness called Breathe. Right, right, and it's, right, you know, this breathe, thing comes right. on your screen and uh -huh. it encourages you to take deep breaths. It's a pretty flower. It's nice. I will t and it's a pretty flower. <laughs> but I will tell you, Brett, during those first couple of days when I was in serious pain, like uh -huh. sometimes I just uh -huh. needed to calm myself because right. the pain was intense right. and right. I would do like, give me a three or four minute mindfulness uh, of breathe. And I would do it. Yeah. And again, I'm not a very Zen person, right? Right. <laughs> but at that point in my life, you know, it, like, you know what? it, it got me calm. It's Yay. Okay. So that was useful. Um, so anyway, it's been totally useful. Um, I'll give you two tips. If you, if you find yourself, you know, using your Apple watch when you're sick or, or recovering or something, first of all, you're going to be wearing it 24 seven because like right. I wanted to have it on and, and I'm still wearing it at night because if something happens at three in the morning yeah, and I you need be help, able to call. I right. want to be able right. to call my wife or, or, or my kids or something like that. Um, but th the battery obviously can't last 24 seven for, you know, without ever charging it. And so if you have a newer model of the Apple Watch, I think it's the, the Series 7 and later, you can have fast charging, which is nice because it uses USB-C. And so right, like right. I have one set up right here where I am at my computer, which my computer is just sitting on our dining room table right now, um, that when I stick it on there, it, it gets it up to 100% really quickly because oh, I want to do that so I can get it back on my watch, which is nice. Yeah, of and course. then the other thing I say is, although I wear my Apple Watch at night in case I need to call somebody for an emergency, um, I don't want my display on when I'm sleeping because it's you know a little light, too much light. right and so what i do is because i have an always on watch with an always on display so what i've been doing and there's a number of ways to do it but i've been using theater mode um uh, which is yeah. another one of those control centers thing right. it's got the two little faces like the the happy and sad face theater mode um if i tap that button what it does is it turns off the always on screen so it's completely black and if I did have sounds turned on on my watch, it would put it into silent mode. Again, I'm normally okay. in silent mode anyway. Now, notifications still come through when you're in theater mode, but I actually okay. like that because if I just need to be notified, I, I don't mind risking waking myself in the middle of the night from notifications. That's usually not going to wake me up anyway from just tapping right. my wrist. But right. um, but just I just like the idea of having notifications. If you wanted to turn off notifications too, instead of using theater mode, you could use the do not disturb mode, which is the right, one that the, looks like a the, moon or a icon. Focus, uh, yeah, so, or a anyway, focus, I cannot, yeah. you can hear how much I'm raving and all the different no features. No kidding. That's I great. love my Apple watch, but when you're in the condition that I've been in, it's just been so wonderful to have. So bravo so, well, just to like, the Apple watch. It's just like you said, I remember we used to like have a bell or, you know, we'd start yelling and it's like, it's just so nice that you have so much control uh, from yeah. that way. Well, my friend, hopefully you continue to use the Apple Watch and continue to get <laughs> well. You. I appreciate it. Thank you. Because <laughs> that's important because we got to get back on our schedule for the podcast. I don't like Indeed. this in a week. I mean, it was for good reason, and that's okay. But it's like I'm <laughs> glad to talk with you again, Jeff. And uh, we'll talk next week then. Sounds good. Thanks, Brett. Bye-bye, everybody.